What up, Pittsburgh Steel fans? Matty P here with another episode of Steel is Touching Under. It has been a few days since we've been able to do a show for you guys. We'll see how, how much I can do um, without getting into a coughing fit. Have not been well lately. That's why I didn't get any content from Shannon and I over the weekend. I just was not in a good place to record. See how I go with this show. How many times I've got to pause it to cough and what have you. But anyway, wanted to talk about Pittsburgh Steelers. Wanted to talk about the week that was and the week that we're going to have this week. Probably more preview show for you today. Firstly, couple, we've got to do the housekeeping. Thoughts and prayers out to Ricky Pearsall. Glad to hear he's been um, released from hospital. Terrifying moment for anyone. Should not have to deal with that. Should not be, um, be having his success thrown in his face with someone trying to nick him, nick his Rolex at gunpoint. That's not on. Um, also, on the flip side of things, because we almost had death, let's go to life. Congratulations to TJ Watt and his uh, wife. I think it's Danny Watt. Um, in terms of them being pregnant with their first child due February. Hopefully that's a double whammy with a Super Bowl and a child. Hopefully TJ is not forced to pick between playing the Super Bowl and being there for the birth of his child and all those good things. But <coughs> if we go by the analysts, according to have had 28 analysts on NFL.com talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers and talk about, well, every team really, and they're given their ratings of who's going to make the playoffs, who's going to win the Super Bowl. Only one person had the Steelers out of the 28 winning the AFC North. Everyone else had a, the average made it tie for third with the Bengals. I think that's going to happen. I think the Steelers are going to be first or second. Um, but they did talk about the fact to win the North, you will need double-digit wins. And we know the Steelers have played well against AFC North opponents. That end run of the season, though, is going to be tough. So, obviously, when I originally planned to do this show, it had just been after the practice squads got announced, and I was going to run through all that. What I will do is just we'll, we'll bring up the team. I'll share a couple of things that I think to watch over the course of this week. I will still share my thoughts on that practice squad. One of the first things to be really aware of is obviously Siamalu now has that injury. Um, now, Siamalu should be between three and four weeks out. I think Fatanu should be in a good place to play. We'll just go up. We'll bring him up in a second. Where is he? Yeah, so... We go down to designated physically, physically. Where are we? So he's not on that list there because otherwise if he was on that point, he wouldn't be able to return yet. Um, and that's one thing I will say, really disappointing. Ryan Watson is going to miss the year. Um, Nate Herbig probably misses that year as well, which is a problem. And it's a real problem that Nate Herbig is injured because of the fact that we know Siamalu is going to be out for these three or four weeks. So we should see whether Mason McCormick gets a start. We should see where they move James Daniels around, whether it's Spencer Anderson um, or whether Fatanu plays in at guard and you play Dan Moore um, at right tackle. I think that's less likely. I think you're going to see Broderick um, as the left tackle and then you're going to see, um, of course, uh, Fatanu as the right tackle and then they'll get one of the guys to fill in at the guard spot. Interesting they brought in LeGlue onto the practice squad as well. But obviously, the offensive line is going to be a big issue. Now, the other thing that they did this week was they named Pat... Sorry, they named Pat... They named... Uh, Patrick Queen will be the starting linebacker. But they named um, Russell Wilson the starting quarterback. Um, and that, I thought, was really big when we think about Russell Wilson. I'm not surprised you listen to the Cam Haywood show um, when it comes to Russ. Um, and Russ is clearly there to win games. Russ is clearly there. Um, I'm going to take this list away for a little bit. Russ is clearly going to win the games. He wants to be the Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback. He wants to be the leader. He wants to win Super Bowls. I'm not surprised by this. Mike Tomlin went on Rich Eisen's show, which if you, most people probably would listen to it by now the long weekend. And he did it like it was very interesting to see sort of the take there. I said that as one of the five things that was decided out of the final preseason game, that Russell Wilson would be the starting quarterback. And I'm really actually pumped to see it, having listened to that podcast. Not just that podcast with Haywood, but that was like the you know the cherry on top of the on top of the icing on the cake. I felt like Russ is the one to go with the whole off season, and so I'm so excited to see it. The guy had 26 TDs to eight interceptions last year. If he can do that again this year, the Steelers are going to win a lot of games. The Steelers are going to win double digit games. So I was really happy about that. <coughs> One of the other things we saw was the IU trade failed to come through. With the IU trade failing to come through, Steelers wide receiver room has been a lot of attention. People still think the move is going to be made. I said all along IU could not be coming. I said all, I, all along IU probably still resigns with San Francisco. 
Yes, there was the trade that was apparently agreed with Col Colton Sutton going to the 49ers, the Steelers trading a third, getting Ayuk. But even then, they would have had a payment problem for him. Now, a lot of people, the hype is you'll see a deal done with Cam Haywood. You'll see a deal done with Pat Freemuth. It gives them money for Pickens. It gives them money now to – it gives actually a better money in carrot dangle toward Russell Wilson playing well this year as well. So I think in the long term, things are going to be good. I still think the Steelers, if they need to make a move for a wide receiver, there'll be guys they can go after. Um, but particularly, like, after what happened to Ricky Pearsall now, Ayuk's definitely going to be off that table. Um, although, don't be surprised to see Pearsall play this week with the whole um, Brad Robinson Jr. thing from the Washington Commanders. So, yeah, that's kind of interesting. Obviously, as I said, the offensive line's an interesting situation. Defensive back is another area that I am a little bit worried about with Ryan Watts injured. I've got to admit that. Um Corey Trice, you know, what? how other he looks like being out. Darius Rush being in there. Um, obviously, he's still got Cam Sutton suspended. So it's going to be an interesting time, I think, for the cornerbacks. Beanie Bishop will play a big role this week, as will Dante Jackson, obviously, Joe Porter Jr. as well. Um, but it is going to be an interesting situation. But I think when you look at – let's go down to the, to the uh, free safeties because – well, I'll just listen to the safeties – was keeping of Jalen Elliott. I was surprised they did that. He, will, I did not think he had that good a preseason, but what do I know? Um, but DeMonte Casey, he is going to be important with these three safety sets, and particularly when they get um, Patrick Wilson on the field with Alan Roberts and with Patrick Queen, you're going to see some interesting um, sub packages, some interesting dime sets. Um, they're going to play a lot of three heavy safety. They're going to stick some of these guys, guys rotating around the slot because you've also got Deshaun Elliott in the mix. I would love them to keep Deshaun Elliott just as a strong safety and do it that way, but it is what it is. They're going to play him the way they want to play him. I also want to just highlight Corridor Patterson list as a running back. I said uh, two to three weeks ago that Corridor Patterson was the third running back on the list. That someone was fighting for the fourth in Jonathan Ward or Dejan Edwards. They let Dejan Edwards go. They brought in Jonathan Ward on the practice squad. And I got laughed at by someone in the comments who told me I was a complete idiot along with another bloke. Well, he's the third listed running back, so I'm going to take that one where it is. Um, I'm the winner there. You're not. Um, but no, I just just all jokes aside. Like, it is an interesting situation. They've got no fourth running back on the roster right now. So that was another thing that we should see this week. Look at the division of labor. We also know the hamstring complaint from... Um, Jalen Warren. So don't this roster that you will probably see in terms of the 53, two or three changes even this week going into the game. Um, I will say that previewing that you might see some things. You also don't be surprised to see Jonathan Ward um elevated. I think as he can be elevated from the practice squad. Um, and that brings me to the practice squad. I want to talk about this guy, Doug Nestor. Doug Nestor out of West Virginia was someone I'm drafted that I actually was quite keen on the Steelers having a look at. Guy really obviously familiar, um, obviously with Zach Frazier. This is a guy that could have easily got picked in the seventh round. Um, he was a guy that Shannon was pretty high on as well. I thought he, I was high on him last year. I thought he was going to come out in 2023 and he didn't. Um, but mature guy at 24. Not surprised to see the Steelers pick him up um, in free agency. They're obviously done a lot of scouting or like, well, of doing the cut down days. Obviously done a lot of scouting of him when they scouted Zach Frazier. So, Really not surprised to see that. Obviously, got Luglu there. So, there's a couple of guys they can elevate for this week's game if they need to. I was surprised to see them bring back Coz Watkins in some ways. In other ways, I wasn't. Definitely not surprised to see Rodney Williams back there as well. I'm excited for Slade and Coletto um, because I think those two guys could have just really scraped in a roster spot. So, I think that's kind of cool from the practice squad. And again, in terms of previewing the week, don't be surprised to see them take leading roles of practice or to see them... Um, you know, one of those guys be elevated for the game. It could happen. Secondly, Roman Wilson and Calvin Austin. Watch this week. Watch the watch the coaches talk about them. If one of these guys pops up, do not be surprised to see them in this week's game have a big game against George Pickens. That's going to be absolutely huge. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about was the tight ends. Miko Pruitt made the roster. Um, I said that when we did the breaking show on the 53, that I was surprised that Miko Pruitt was going to, was going to make it. There's one name here in Darnell Washington. Connor Haywood's had a great preseason, as always, it seems. Uh, but Darnell Washington's had a lot of favor from um, being mentioned by different guys on, from the offensive coaching staff, been mentioned a lot by Russell Wilson. Darnell could be a real sneaky one for a red zone TD this week. 
look out. I think Darnell's going to have a great start to the season. So that was another name that when I went through, when I looked through all my notes from the preseason, I thought Darnell has been quiet again, but I feel like it's strategically flying under the radar as opposed to Matt Canada not having any freaking clue how to use the bloke. Um, but yeah, other than that, I think that's going to wrap it up. I don't think my voice is going to last much longer. I don't think you want to listen to Raspy, Matt. Um, but I wanted to get something out there. I'll see how I go for tomorrow. My biggest thing is I'm flying to the US of A this Saturday. The biggest thing is I'm going to be healthy for that game. I'm going to be healthy. Well, not we're going to be healthy for the trip, to be healthy for the game in week three. Um, if anyone is in Pittsburgh, want to meet up, tailgate or drinks after the game, hit me up, AussieSteeler91 at gmail.com. No capitals. You see it on my screen in front of me. Hit me up. Shoot me an email. We all are organizing something. There's a couple of people that have already started organizing. Um, or that know we're going to meet up for tailgate. We just got to finalize some logistics. Um, but really excited for that. Um, when I can do that in a couple of weeks' time. But yeah, big week to come from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Obviously, Monday still a public holiday for you guys. So hopefully, you're enjoying. I think it's Labor Day in the US. Um, and then obviously we've got the Mike Tomlin press conference coming up on Tuesday. And then we'll roll through the user course of the week. Um, but yeah, I'm going to rest my voice now. But as always, go Steelers.